There are now books and some uh, magazine and newspaper articles that have been published recently about the power of negative thought. Positive thought is, um, to a large extent, silly. It's silly because we live in a world that takes no account of our particular desires or needs. Uh, it's indifferent. So if you sit around thinking that the world should be serving everything you want to you on a plate, then of course you're going to be disappointed. <coughs> the um, the people who sell positive thought are catering to a basic human need. It's a need that isn't very intelligent in truth. So positive thought is concerned with, well, what? Money, power, fame, possessions, even you know so-called spiritual things and I, I still to this day do not know what the word spiritual means. Um, even spiritual stuff is basically just like um, a baby wanting ice cream. If I do all this pleasure spiritual stuff will I be happy either now or in the future? Will I move to some different level of existence? <coughs> It's all silliness, but it doesn't stop people doing it because lots of people are very unhappy. And so they see the promises of so-called spiritual gurus and the like um, as maybe a way out of their misery. So positive thinking, at the end of the day, is literally just serving our survival instinct. That's all it's serving. So you get more power, you get more money, you get more uh, possessions. All these things are kind of life enhancing. And even the so called spiritual pursuits are about some, usually anyway, about some continuation of life, either after death or in some kind of way, merging with the one true self or some nonsense like that. Um, so it's worth stating exactly what positive thinking is about. It's about continuing to survive. And if you are to believe the Buddhists, they say that all our misery comes from our desire to exist. <laughs> so you can see that, well, well if the, if the uh, Buddhists are right, you can see that positive thinking is just going to lead you to misery because it's just an amplification of this desire to exist. It's a natural drive, but it's also a stupid one because it will lead to misery, because the, the world is not going to deliver the things you want. It's not interested in you. So, um, the reason why negative thinking is becoming more popular, I mean, it's relative, isn't it? I don't think all that many people are bought into it, but it is a much wiser way to deal with life. So, uh, typical negative thoughts might be, well, you know, this project's going to fail, this business will fail, my health will fail, relationships fail, life fails. Are these, are these inaccurate things? No, they're not inaccurate. Um, nine out of ten new business startups fail within a year. So, <clears throat> it's fairly accurate to think that if you start a new business, there's a well, a 9 out of 10 chance it's going to be, uh, it, it will not exist in a year's time. So, this negative thought, which is really, you could say, more like realistic thought, but let's call it negative just to annoy people. Um, this negative thought is really just more in line with reality. Things fail, relationships fail, businesses fail, health fails. Your favorite theories about life might fail, and so on. So in business, and it's, I'm going to talk about a number of things, but I'll just talk about business because this is where a number of these books have been launched, <coughs> stating that uh, the pessimists typically are better business people. And they're better business people 
because they make allowances for failure. Whereas your rah rah optimist, you know the you know the kind of person, the kind of person who goes to uh, Tony Robbins lectures, um, is just hell bent on their latest idea or whatever being successful. And the chances are it won't be. So don't bet the farm in a business ad adventure. You know, start ten of them. One of them might wa work. Expect your projects to go wrong. Have plans B, C, D, and so on. Because plan A probably isn't going to work. Expect the people in your business to lie, steal, and cheat. They're, they're only doing what is nature would dictate that they should do, which is to try and enhance their own position through lying, stealing, and cheating. And... Business in truth is largely about lying, stealing and cheating, just in case you don't know. So, the amazing power of negative thought in philosophy and spirituality is much more interesting. So, for a start, your difficult questions. Why is there something instead of nothing? Was the world created or has it just come about? Um... Do you have some form of existence after death of the body and so on? All these questions you will never answer. You have to remember that people have been asking these questions for thousands of years. And there are still no answers. Why? Well, because the questions themselves are nonsense. And it would take me a long time to go into why they're nonsense. But very briefly, we see the world in a particular way and we think in a particular way, and it's arrogant to think that the way we think about the world actually reflects how the world really is. So anyway, in terms of philosophy and spirituality, do not expect your heavy, burdensome questions to be answered. And if you do answer them, it's because you've just bought into some kind of dogma or something. There's also nothing... People talk about enlightenment and awakening and all that kind of thing. There's nothing like that. As the Zen Buddhists would say, all there is is chop wood, carry water. Just go about your daily business. All the promises made by the so-called spiritual people and maybe some of the philosophers um, are just... Well, they're, they're wild claims in their most innocent form. They're charlatanism in their deliberate form. People really just saying, well, I can make you happy through my whatever it is. And um, it never comes about. Also, if you want to really experience the amazing power <laughs> of negative thought, then you should meditate on your death frequently. This is something that Gurdjieff talked about. And he even went as far as to say, well, you know, if people want to somehow get a grip on their life, this is what they need to do. Um, and it's a fairly strong thing to do, and not everybody should do it. But if you can do it, it's a really good thing to do. Because it will give a sense of proportion to everything. And possibly do even more than that for you. You should never, ever try to be happy. If you're feeling miserable, enjoy the misery, but simply experience life as it comes. It's our gaining ideas. I did a podcast on expectations of, I don't know, a month or so ago. Um, it's our expectations that make us unhappy as much as anything else. So simply try and experience life as it comes, which is not, sounds easy, but it's not all that easy. And take a tip from Schopenhauer, life is not meant to be enjoyed. It's a fundamental error in our thinking. I mean, above everything else, do try and drop your expectations and life will become way lighter and more pleasant. Um, and, you know, a little bit of sympathy pity maybe for the positive thinkers, the uh, optimists, 
whose expectations are up through the roof and most of those expectations will never be met. And because of that, these people will experience ongoing disappointment. Even in relationships, be realistic. The reality of all relationships is that everyone is servicing their own needs. Even the altruist and the do-gooder and your latest lover and the person who's pro proclaiming their everlasting love for you, all they're doing is servicing their own needs. When their needs change, their relationship with you will change as well. So relationships change and you know, some wonderful relationship you have right now might turn into a nightmare five years down the track. I mean, you should expect all your relationships to be difficult and you know, you know, many of them to fail. Uh, and if you remember that, you might be more inclined to be a bit more intelligent about things, which in turn might make a relationship work if you can work in an intelligent manner. You know, you said this to me and it hurt me. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I, I say it because blah, blah, blah. You know, some kind of negotiation, discussion about what's going on in your relationship. Instead of expecting roses and um, every day to be Valentine's Day. Above everything else, just drop your expectations. Expect nothing but death. <laughs> And your outlook will just be more honest because that is the only thing that you actually know. You you, you can expect that and be 100% certain that it is going to come about. Everything else is just, well, it's just speculation and um, a kind of, well, not very intelligent hoping that all your wishes are going to come true. They're not going to come true, I can tell you that now. So if you um, can adopt this view of things this and utilize this amazing power of negative thought, what's the outcome? Well, oddly enough, and you, you're perhaps not going to believe this unless you've been down this route yourself, uh, the outcome is that you'll become more happy. You'll have less expectations, so less disappointments. You won't get so disturbed about things that are really not very important, and so on and so on. So you'll become happier. And of course, you can't talk about this to other people because they will, well, they won't like it because what you're talking about here with these negative assertions is, in a sense, life denying. But, well, there's a whole other story here, but um, you serve life. Life doesn't serve you, you serve life. Your drive to continue surviving and to procreate is just nature using you. And for you to do all the things that nature wants means that you are driven by this, well, I'm going to become a billionaire, I'm going to become famous, I'm going to get a better car, I'm going to have more money, I'm going to have spiritual experiences that are fantastic and so on. You know, it's just nature driving you, you in effect using you. Um, if you can adopt the power, the amazing power of negative thought, then in a sense you start to use nature and there's something to think about.